my good colleagues at NASA, I love them to death, and I'm uh, a part of the fold. But I, I think that website is useful, but it still doesn't get to the point for someone in Noonan, Georgia, or someone in Canton, Georgia, in terms of what that means for them and their communities. Uh, that heat uh, manifests itself in, in, in more extreme and intense heat waves that affect someone in Blue Ridge. Uh, that heat affects the intensity of the rain rates because we know that the climate system, as it warms, can have access to more water vapor. So when we're driving down Interstate 85, as I was this weekend going to my son's AAU basketball game, 85 could not handle that rainfall. It was literally ponding on 85 because our infrastructure is overwhelmed by this generation's rainstorms. Uh, the sea level rise in coastal communities in Savannah and Brunswick and so forth, St. Simons, uh, they are impacted, the shrimp uh, industry there because of the warming temperatures. I still think as I drive back down to my alma mater at Florida State University sometimes and I drive through Albany and Cairo and some of those places and see those pecan trees and other agricultural activity overwhelmed by Hurricane Michael. Newsflash, we're not supposed to have a 100-mile-per-hour gust from a hurricane that far inland, but that's the reality of more intense hurricanes as we move forward. So um, one of the things that I know Marilyn and I both think quite a bit about is sort of moving this sort of – ivory tower jargon about climate science mm. into the sort of real world. And I know, I know there's someone listening to this. So Dr. Shepard, Dr. Brown, the climate changes naturally. It always has. We've always had hurricanes. Indeed, we have. We certainly know that. But I always use this analogy to make the point about why that's a flawed not narrative. Grass grows naturally, too. But when we fertilize our lawns, it grows differently. And so that's what's happening to our climate system. We're fertilizing it. 